So I'm here with um, someone you might recognise who has been in the media quite a lot recently. It's Kelly. Kelly's been on Big Brother and has just have a book that's just been published and she's here to talk to us a little bit about why she's here at Sparkle. So, hey Kelly, how are you doing? Is this your first Sparkle? No, it's my third. Um, it's one of the first places I ever came out in in 2012. But every time I saw a camera, I would disappear and people like you, I would, I would just run and hide because I was terrified of being recognised because I hadn't come out publicly and I was transitioning very privately. But now I can come out, I can be myself and I can really enjoy life now and that's what I'm doing. That's really good. So you've had quite a long journey in regards to your experience of the media and stuff like that. How do you feel the media has dealt with your transitioning and your journey? I think the media have been very friendly, very pro my transition and I think it's helped lots of others and it's helped the community in general and people are beginning to see and understand a bit more about what a transsexual goes through to get to to get to that point of um, complete happiness and peace. So, were you surprised by the way the media dealt with it? I was very surprised. I I, I was fearing the worst if I'm if I'm being honest. But sometimes if you fear the worst, the best comes out of that. <laughs> That's true. So, do you think you may have come out earlier if you'd known that the reaction would have been predominantly positive? Um, that's a hard one because it wasn't just the media I was frightened of. Uh, my father was alive, it was hard for me to tell him, you know, um, I wanted to tell him but I never told him even when he, was, when he died in 2009. Um, and then two of my friends oh, committed suicide and that made me realise if I don't do something I could end up like them. And um, I, I think then I came to, I had to come to terms with myself and understand exactly what it was and how I could deal with it the best way. And then I had to think about my family because I didn't want to lose their love and support, and which I never thank heavens. So um, that's, a, you know, yes, it, if I'm honest, I would love to have come out a lot earlier and enjoyed life. You know, I'm a teenager now going through life all over again. Uh, you know, going through puberty again, going through learning about myself, going through courting, if I ever caught, you know, it's um, it's such a strange world, but the one thing is I'm happy and contented with myself because I'm now the real me. So how did it feel the first time you present yourself as Kelly? Um, Nerve-wracking. We're talking about going out in public, are we? Very nerve-wracking. I could hear my knees knocking. You could have heard my knees knocking in Timbuktu. Um, I was petrified. I. I kept going in the toilet, um, like looking in the mirror at myself, and eventually I only lasted, it was a nightclub I went to, and I only lasted for an hour in a nightclub. I had to go back to the hotel, I was so nervous. And then the next day my friend took me out shopping. I actually nearly wet myself, to be honest. Um, I was just frightened people were staring at me, reckon I, I was very conscious of being um, not accepted, because the one thing all us trans girls would like to be is just be accepted and to be seen as human, normal human beings going about our life. But I was quite lucky. Um, being small, I got away with a lot and um, I was never really read or um, I was never picked out on. And I, I have faced a little bit of, um, shall we say, transphobia, but that's because everyone knows who I am. And it's only the ignorant ones and the, the bigots that, uh, but in general, the general public and the, the whole of Britain have been 100 fantastic. But, I mean, that's good to hear. You mentioned shopping, and that is another kind of, can be a source of anxiety for trans women, whether they are on the journey. So what would you say as a tip for trans women to make the process easier for them when they go shopping? I, I think just it, be honest, be proud of who you are, and... Um, just look the world right in the eye and say this is me you either accept me or you don't I'm not harming no one I'm just living my life you know um, I must admit I used to tremble when I first started shopping I never used the changing rooms now that I've fully transitioned I, I love going in and try, trying on clothes so you know it's all about confidence um, the more confident you are the, um, the easier it becomes and how did you work out 
what clothes to wear and what makeup to choose because obviously if you're socialised as one gender and then you're transitioning to the other gender it must be quite a challenge to work out what is right for my height, my build, my eye colour, that kind of thing. I, I picked certain role models and I modelled myself on them. I've also got three daughters so that does help. Like last night I was out and I put something up on Twitter and one of my daughters phoned me and, went and, twi and tweeted back Get that red lipstick off you, it's too bright, it doesn't suit you. So I've got my own style consultants. <laughs> and how does that feel having your own daughters give you feedback? Uh, it's great, you know, we're, we're closer than ever and they've supported me so much that I'm so proud of them and um, I'm, I just love them so much. Do you think it's a good thing that, that you're so prominent and people are kind of learning more and coming round to the idea that gender's not so fixed as they thought it was? I, I think it's good for the trans community, but for me personally, I'd like to be a little bit more private because I haven't got a private life. That is my problem. My life is so public. I go into a bar and I'm instantly recognisable. And, you know, I think it's a bit of a hindrance if I want to move on with my life and find a relationship. And because if I do, I have to build the trust with that person and that person has to be able to accept the baggage I carry because let's be I, you know all us trans people we carry baggage because of who we was before we transitioned but here today at Sparkle listening to two speeches by um, LGBT community I now understand why we should work together and all support each other and I have actually changed I think the LGB community are very much supporting and helping the trans community and we can only learn from what they went through. How do you feel that Sparkle's getting bigger and bigger every year and that actually this is the biggest trans event in the world? It's great. You know, it, it does help people. I mean, it helped me. And you look around and today I've had people come up saying to me, Kelly, you've been an inspiration and this place is helping us. And it's great because you can be yourself even if you're still in the closet like I was when I first came here and you can start learning about yourself and just talking and looking at others, you, you, it helps. That's all I can really say, it's a great event. Can you tell us also about your book? Yeah, my book, um, I think was the final piece of my jigsaw. It was, a, it was better than any therapy or counselling I had because I had to dig deep into my soul and dig up things that I had tried to bury and put it all down in writing because I wanted to be totally honest. And I felt when I finished it, and I read the finished article, it seemed that I was so relieved and I'd lost a lot of um, lot of baggage. My daughters were interviewed for the book and I read what they said and um, I just, um, I think the book, as I say, is that final, well, it's it the final piece of that chapter, now my new life has started. I, I think the book sort of shows that, that gender can affect anyone. Because I always say to the question, why pick on me? Why pick on Catelyn Jenner? You know, we come from such a, a different world, a high profile world. So it shows that gender knows no boundary. It could pick on any one of you walking down this road. And you know, if it does, just get help and get support and be yourself. And do you think you'll be back next year? Definitely, I, I mean, I will always come back to Sparkle because you're among people like yourself and everyone here, you know, we're all human beings and we all respect each other and we all get on. It's, I don't know, it's something special and um, sacred to me. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend.